this time on Graveyard Cars. We catch you up on the history, the bodywork, graphics, and engine build of our 1972 Top Banana Charger Rally. The Waltons are coming and they're not leaving without their family heirloom. All this leads to an epic race to get the trim, ornamentation, and buffers installed, and hopefully get a test drive before the Waltons show up. Relive the story, the struggle, and witness for the first time the unveiling of the Waltons 1972 Dodge Charger Rally on this episode of Graveyard Cars. I'm Mark Warman, and together with the most critical man in the world, Darren Kirkpatrick, Give me a gun. my son-in-law Josh, oh, yeah. and my best friend Roy, well, all right. we bring dead muscle cars back to life, to exactly the way they were on the day they were born if we don't kill each other. There. Oh. Oh. It's gonna be a bloodbath. I'm Jim Walton and this is my daughter Mitzi and this is our Dodge Charger. So Mark, why exactly did you decide to take Jim and Mitzi's car? The main reason for doing it, I think, was Jim and Missy. When Missy wrote me on Facebook and she told me the story about the car, and then I saw the pictures of the car back in the day, saw that it had pretty much carried and, and raised a family, and then a second family, you know, as generations go on. Even though we have tricker cars and rarer cars and wilder cars and all that stuff out here that are worth a lot more money, I think that the story offset the rarity of the car. We just won the car that we could travel around the country with, and we liked the color. I can't tell you enough about how much the backstory means. When you start hearing the story, you hear Jim talking about when he's a young man and just starting his family, he wanted a car big enough to haul everybody, but yet still got good gas mileage. He wanted to take his family all over the United States on vacations in this car and be able to afford to do it. Remember, gas was probably 50 cents a gallon. <laughs> it's 1972. So he was thinking economy. When the uh, car is finished and we receive it back, I'm going to keep it here in, in Springfield and for about a year and drive it and just enjoy it. Eventually, they'll give it to their oldest son. He will have it until he's done with it, and then it'll go on to maybe my youngest son, and then the two boys will be in charge of which grandchild gets it, who is able to take care of it and honor it and keep it the way it should be kept so it always stays in the family. I love you, Dad. I love you, too. Very few people still have their original cars after 43 years, so. Yes. You're a good Glad man, Charlie yeah. Brown. <laughs> Thank you Great very to much. See ya. Thanks, Mark. OK, you're welcome. <laughs> now that they are gone, it's time to knuckle down and get some work done in the car. Take okay. care of our baby. I'm going to do it. I'm going to make it beautiful. OK, good deal. Some of the cars you choose to media blast, some of them you choose to dip. What's the big difference there? 71 Cuda got dipped, right? right? Took up to Portland. They don't use an acidic product. They use a caustic that doesn't eat the metal away. When that car came out, the metal was clean. It was shiny. It was new. It was ready to be welded on. It was ready to be cut apart. It was ready to have everything done to it that needed to be done in the way of body work. What, what you didn't have was any spots of rust left. They were completely gone. And more importantly, you had a really clean finish. Right. So meaning that every time you rotate that car around on the rotisserie, you weren't getting tons of walnut shells out. When they blast those things with walnut shells, it's not that there isn't a place for it, but at Graveyard Cars, not anymore. We sent, oh, really? we sent Tom's Daytona down there. We just sent the 72 Charger down there. We sent uh, the yellow AAR down there. And when those cars came back, they were clean, and the guy did a good job. I'm not saying anything disparaging about that, but mm. you can only do so good of a job with that type of a stripping process. And then the cleanup on it is is horrible. We have had no problems as a result of media blasting them. All three of the cars that I mentioned are beautiful and still continue mm -hmm. to be beautiful. But to maintain the quality of the job and the least amount of cleanup afterwards, we're going with dipping them. You are. Yeah, I am. <laughs> I was agreeing with you. I said, you are. I said, I am. And in the case of Jim and Mitzi's car, 
Uh, very solid car. The only metal that we had to replace was that roof skin, which we were lucky and had a 71 satellite out back. Most people don't realize 71 and 74 satellite, 71 and 74 B body, the roof sections are the same. Well, they would if they were a car person usually, wow. or a Mopar guy. So in that case, all we had to do was replace the roof skin and then we could start doing the body work. It was a pretty straight car, so mm -hmm. there wasn't much filler on it at all. Primer it, once the primer's done and kicked off, it was ready to move over to the paint guys so they could do the block, prime, block, prime, paint. It's interesting when you're doing a stencil on a blackout versus doing like the uh, V21 blackout on the Black Challenger. So when you're normally on most of the cars when you're doing it, you just got a great big vinyl graphic, you get it wet, put your application gel on there, you place it where it's supposed to go, you make your marks, and you begin squeegeeing it out, and that can be a long, tedious process. In the case of the mask that you got, like Phoenix Graphics supplied us with the mask, that's, the, that's just like a graphic that's put on the hood, except it's in reverse, right? The area, mm -hmm. instead of having black vinyl in there, is wide open so that you can actually paint the surface. Mm -hmm. um, you have to be very careful. I tried on that one to put the gel on it and move it around a little bit. That mask paper is not designed to do that. It is designed to come back up, though. But every time you touch it down and you pull it back up again, you take the chance of distorting it. Mm -hmm. So you really should make your measurements, put that thing down on there, get it all sealed around the edges, run around every square inch with your finger and making sure that that mask paper is touched really well against the actual paint of the car. Right. Then you can go around the whole thing with the scuff pad. When you're scuffing it, if it's not scuffed right, that paint will blow right back off again. Mm. So you've got to have it scuffed, you got to get down. If this is the groove right here where the rally stripe is, you need in there. And if you go too hard, you can roll that paper back up. So you just take your time and just work it around until that thing is dull, until that paint's dull and you know you're going to get adhesion. Right. At that point, once that's done, you can clean it, blow it, turn the fan on, and go mix up your stuff. Uh, in the case of that blackout on the hood, it's the exact same cocktail that we use whenever something needs to be blacked out, like the, the, AAR. the AAR, the tops of the fenders and the hood on the AAR, which right. actually goes into the tops of the doors and the quarters, you know that, instead of a belt molding, it's kind of cool. It kind of emulates the original black uh, matted finish that the factory put on it, except it's done in today's acrylic urethane. So I right. use an acrylic urethane uh, single stage paint, but I put a flattening agent in it. And, and with the right amount of reduction and the right amount of uh, flattening agent in it, you can get that stuff to blush off like that and leave that nice matte finish. What's nice about that versus a rattle can black, because you could make it look the same with a rattle can, a rattle can number one would streak. You would have streaks in it that would not look very good. And number two is you could walk right up to it with lacquer thinner and just wipe it off. Right. You can't touch catalyzed urethane once it's cross-linked together. So it's more durable, it'll hold up. The way it looks now is the way it's gonna look 20 years from now. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's, that's really cool. It's cool. Kind of stuff they ask of me. Well, good brain. Stop, Mark. Back it off. Back it off. Woo! That wasn't my dealing with the practice. I don't want to josh his little boys to get out of getting in trouble or whatever he did. I think he's going to cry. We're looking back at the Walton 72 Charger Rally. We've looked at the history, the bodywork, the hood graphics, but we still have a ways to go before the big reveal. Next, we're doing the decals. Time is starting to run out on the 72 Charger delivery date. Uh, the Waltons are gonna be here to pick it up, but we need to really light a fire under everybody and do as much multitasking as possible to get that car done on time. So I'm installing the, uh, the decals that go in the rally doors. It got pretty crazy with the graphics in 72. In the 60s, 1970 and 1971, it was all about power. Now, now Chrysler fused power and wild looks together in 70 and 71 on their E bodies and some of their B bodies. Yeah. But in 72, because the kids were getting killed and the insurance rates were going out of sight and the fuel was so expensive, they pulled back on the horsepower, but they wanted the cars to stay flashy. Mm. And so they continued to get wilder and wilder with the graphics. Mm -hmm. I remember in 71, the scallops had two scallops two that went up and down like this. In 72, it had four of them, went, five of them that went like that. Yeah. And those had a strobe stripe in them. Again, a wild graphic that when you put them up against the yellow cars, they just pop off of there. You add that in with um, the, the rear stripe, the, the rally stripe that went on the back end of that car. Very difficult stripe to install, by the way. So I'm putting a piece of tape right here on this line to show the very center line of the lock cylinder. This has a lock cylinder cut out in it, but when it's on there, you can't really see it. 
because you've got a reverse curve that's just like that and you're putting a flat decal on it. And so getting this half to stick and then that half to stick without having an air bubble in the middle of it's really difficult. Same yeah. thing out on the quarter ends. But when you're done putting all that ornamentation on there, the decals in the doors, the uh, rear stripe on the back end of it, the hood blackout on it, it just pops. The thing on that when it comes to the graphics that I didn't understand is that whole car was loaded with the rally package. Yeah. Everything, it had it all, it even had a tachometer for a 318. Everything was rally. It should have had the stripe on the back end, but you can clearly see in the original pictures of the car that it didn't. But for whatever reason, whether it was an oversight, whether somebody just forgot to put it on, or whether somebody before Jim got the car just decided, I don't like it on there and I'm gonna take it yeah. off. I felt that since it's such a good looking decal, and it is just a decal, that we'd put it on there. And I'm glad that good. we did because it really made the back end of the car pop. Speaking of the rear decal, I don't think you had it centered right compared to the trunk lock opening. What was the deal? Yeah, that kind of did look out of whack. Yeah, you two clowns coming along questioning the master. No, That's we're fine. Just looking at the end result. Well, thank you for asking. Let me share with you, okay? <laughs> I had actually played with the center of the hole and matching up the actual opening in the decal itself. And if I had brought it down to perfect center and left and right to perfect center, it would have looked like crap on the back of the car. It would have been too low in it. The actual decal at the bottom would have been hanging over a half of an inch and rolled up. So I selected the best of all of the worlds in the way of centering it left to right, up to down, and still maintaining the spirit of the original graphic on there. So I don't know if it's because the deck lid had problems, I don't know if the decal had problems, I don't know what it was, or if that's just the way that they were. You've seen many decals. Or maybe you put it on wrong. No, I think I put it on right. I just explained that to you. But if you need us to play that back because you have overdue disease, that's fine. <laughs>I just finished building the long block out for uh, Mitzi and Jim's 72 Dodge Charger. All I've got left now are just the bolt-on things, the intake manifold, exhaust manifolds, timing cover, water pump. I recently had somebody ask me this question and I was just asked it again. Why are we doing everything under one roof? Have you been around shops that do the mechanical under one roof, the body under one roof, all of the painting under one roof, the assembly under one roof? I mean. By everything being done under one roof, you control your destiny. You know where the cars are, you know where the parts are, you know what the end result is gonna be, and you're in control of being able to deliver that. Mm -hmm. So that's why we do everything under one roof. I don't think many people do, but eventually I'd like to be able to do everything. I'd like to be able to make the nuts and bolts someday, but I don't think that'll happen. Huh? Good huh? Wow. All right, so where I'm at now is the motor's basically put together. I just gotta put the water pump and the harmonic balancer on it, and then I can roll it out, clean it down, mask a couple of ports off and it's ready to paint. And when you're non-high performance, like this is just a 318 two barrel, um, it doesn't go the Hemi Orange. Typically every engine you see us paint out there in the paint shop is Hemi Orange, but this one actually goes the corporate blue. Somewhere around 71, 72, Chrysler was changing over. And so you started seeing that corporate blue come in. You saw it in the 7318, but you saw it by 71, it was in on almost all the engines, except for I think the 440 was still orange. By 73, they were all corporate blue. So while, it's, uh, while it is a cool color, and I understand that they were just mainstreaming for it, I think that Chrysler was playing down the muscle and building up just the fact that it's a good car and, and it's a nice looking engine. But if you had a 69 440, it should be Hemi orange. If you had a 70, it should be Hemi orange. Depending on the year of the Hemi, they also had different colors. Did you know that? 66, 67 were different colors. Uh, orange. orange. Mm -hmm. And the air cleaners were also a different color from that. I'm surprised you didn't know all that. You can give us a chance to say it. Speaking of painting the engines, I noticed you were trying to replicate, uh, was that like Wild Bill Hickok? Or... Oh yeah, well it's a style, you wouldn't understand because you'd be in there all nervous, you'd be like Waldo from the Hot for Teacher video with Van Halen all nervous and shaking. I'm in there just spraying, doing my thing, I'm moonwalking around, I'm flipping it a couple of times. That's what you do when you're cool and you're chilled out, you're not all crazy out of your head. Yeah, but you're Those not are... cool. No, I was cool in second grade. A thousand dollar paint gun, a thousand dollars worth of material in the and gun, you're on the and, paint I'm in, and I'm and I'm moonwalking. So you're being careless with all the expensive equipment. That's exactly, exactly what you're doing. Say what you, you careless want. Careless. The end result is perfect. No matter careless. how you slice careless. it, it comes up careless. cool. Josh could paint the engine, no problem. I think we're gonna have a good day today at Graveyard Cars. The 318 is painted corporate blue and ready to go on to the K member and the stand. Uh, our goal today is to get the motor put onto the stand, build it out as much as we can with the parts that we have, and reunite it with the 72 Charger. What's your favorite part of the build then? 
I like putting together the whole entire front end. Having the uh, the, the engine... holy sacred union. Yes, the <laughs> the uh, engine to the K member marrying the transmission to the engine, getting it installed. I would have I... to say it's one of the best parts of the whole thing because prior to that, it's just a car. Yep. It's just a body shell. It's just sitting there. But when you put that engine together with the transmission, all the pieces bolted onto it, the, the cooling lines, the fans, the hoses, the belts, the wiring harnesses, everything is on there. Marry that to the K member with all the suspension, upper and lower control arms, inner and outer tie rod ends, you know, all the pieces mm -hmm. that go on it. Once you're done that, it's ready to go in the car. You lower that car down around that engine and transmission, you raise it back up in the air with them together. Mm -hmm. For the first time, that's a car. You've got the heart. It's ready. And, and one of the things that is we're working along there that I will say, even though he drives me crazy, is like in the gravel shield, right? He, he found that, I was in a hurry, I was moving along, I wasn't paying attention, but he actually knows enough to know stuff like that. Oh, oh, inspection cover gotta go on first. What cover? It goes over all this. Oh, you know what we forgot. Where's the shield? One of my better attributes is finding fault and mistakes as the others have made here at GYC. I guess that's actually a good thing. Mark, is this the only thing? That is it, yes. Okay. Because without that shield in there, you know, besides having rocks and gravel, it'd be a few pounds lighter too. <laughs> Speaking of being lighter, how's your Weight Watchers doing? See, that's the f***ing problem right there. <laughs> Can't you come up with anything better? What do you want me to say? <laughs> I'm fat, okay? <laughs> You're stupid. I can lose weight. You're still going to be stupid. We can be educated. You understand we that. Can still be you can still be stupid, though. No, we won't be stupid. No, you're pretty much stupid. <laughs> True or false? In 1972, the Dodge Charger Rally scallops in the door went horizontally versus vertically in 1971. The answer coming up after the break. So were the door scallops on the 1972 Dodge Charger Rally horizontal? The answer is true. In 1971, they went vertical and there were only two of them on the Charger RT. They had a solid black accent at the bottom of the scallop. In 1972, there were five horizontal scallops with a strobe stripe to accentuate the scallop on the door. Visit graveyardcars.com to learn more. We're revisiting the work on the 72 Charger Rally. The decals are installed, the engine is built and painted, the drivetrain is assembled and installed in the car. Next up, Josh and Derek install the rear suspension. Well, you know, uh, the, the front end aside and working our way back, we, Derek and I did get the rear end installed. You know, we got uh, the leaf springs, we got, we got it put onto the uh, the actual rear end housing itself. If I had actually ordered the uh, shackle retainers, so you could have had that done too. But I was gonna say, you guys did a good job on that. The brake, brake backing plates looked right, the shoes, everything was had the right color, the right fit. The housing had the right sheen to it. The leaf springs looked great. The shackles at the back, the hangers in the front, everything looked right. I thought you did a good job on it. Thank you. A real good job. Well, I'm Larry Fortner, and I'm Larry's Interior in Cresswell, Oregon. And uh, I come out and do Mark's tops for him and put the headliners in, and I've been doing it over 40 years. You know, it was really tough with Larry when he first came here. He was so nervous. The very first job he did, he ripped the head. On the AAR. Yeah. He, he was so I nervous, man. bad for him. Yep, and he, he came back and... He'd been doing it a long stuff. time, but... One of the things that I think is the best about Larry is that he'll come here and do the work. Yeah. And you remember in the past, we were taking him across town to some of those people and they were charging twice as much as Larry yep. and taking twice as long and you always run the risk of moving a car. Yep. And again, care, custody, and control. I like it when I got control over a car, when I can know, walk out my shop and see it. Yep. So uh, he does a good job on it. He does it for a fair price. And I think the truth of the matter is he was doing these vinyl tops when there were vinyl tops on cars. Right. Where a lot of these shops, the kids that are working in them today don't even know what vinyl tops are. Right. So this is the emblem that goes on the deck lid of the car. Okay, now that I got it cut out, I'm gonna go in and just make sure it goes in the right spot. You know, when I looked at the original photos of that Dodge nameplate on the back, um, or the Charger nameplate, it was down on the right hand side. And it, I've seen that many times. I've, I mean, these were mass produced cars. The guys didn't care. Like I say, a lot of them were like Darren, you know, they weren't Just really- Just put the emblem on it and get it over with. 
No, it's an emblem. Just put it on and go. No, because you want to emulate the way the factory did it. And if they, the they did it wrong. Put it on Maybe, well, they would, probably did. That could be some kind of inconsistency. Isn't this though, what from we're talking about? From plant to plant, though, was there some kind of inconsistency? You see a guy lying that killed himself, and the cops didn't frisk him, and he had a, a gun right here, and they got him in a little interrogation room, and they talked to him, and he go, the cop goes out, and the guy just goes, Shoot. The cop comes back in, the guy's dead in the chair. True story. They didn't call the anybody, any of other guys sort of sitting there shaking uh -huh. in the chair. Right, right. And that's why I put those emblems on the way I do. <laughs> I got it. Okay, Josh, you did a good job putting the dash together. What do you remember? Was What's the hardest part, do you think, of reassembling the dash with Derek and putting it in the car? You know, Derek and I worked together the whole entire process, mm -hmm. and that that made it go by a lot quicker. And, you know, him and I kind of hit a few roadblocks, but we just came in here to the books, Dave Wise's books, mm -hmm. and got as much research as we could on it. How do you like connecting it? Because there is a bit of a balancing act there when you got that thing and you're anchoring it up into place. Right. What about all the wires? I mean, normally I'm the guy in there doing it. In this case, were you the guy hooking everything up? Um, or Derek and you both? Yeah, it? Derek and I both did it. You know, he's trying to walk me through it. Each step of the way, Derek was telling me, this is what you have to do. This goes here. You know, and he was doing it very efficiently. It really? took like five minutes. No joke. Nice. If that. I mean, it, it just went right in. We lifted it up, screwed in the, uh, the screws up top. Uh, tighten the screws down in the, the door area, and it was it was. Well, you did all that without fighting and in, in fighting and calling each other bad names. Yep. Well, nice. Coming at it from a different angle, I suppose. Uh, one of the big components we're getting ready to put on now is our exhaust system. Again, we get those from Accurate Exhaust. So what's up with the machine gun tips? Is that, it that horsepower? That car never came with machine gun tips from the factory. That car was a, a single exhaust car that he wanted to make look like a, if it were a 340, because that's the only that's the lowest engine level you could have got dual exhaust with machine gun tips. Mm. There's the only significance to it is it, they look cool as hell and they sound cool. I mean, the tip itself doesn't make any difference in the audio of the actual exhaust, mm. but they just look bitchin' and dual exhaust sounds bitchin', so, mm. you know. Oh, bitchin'. You learn a new word? It's not benching. I'm not I bench pressing bitchin'. anything. I said bitchin'. Nah, nose is crooked. <laughs> nose is crooked. Mother <laughs> yours is about to be. <laughs> when you're having problems on a car, the best thing to do is walk away. I'm royalty! Stop, Mark. Back I... it off, back it off. <laughs> right off the bat with Mitzi, she's ballin'. So today we're over at the new shop, uh, Andy and Stacy from Rapid Air. That's the company that we bought the new aluminum piping for the airlines at the new shop. Uh, they flew out to give us a hand setting up the system and showing us just how easy it goes together. We have a product that is called Fast Pipe, and it's a compressed air system, very easy and fast to install. Uh, just a perfect product for Mark's new shop. Basically, you cut the pipe to length, chamfer it, insert it into the fitting, Make sure it's bottomed out all the way and tight. Okay. And then we use the spanner wrench to fully tighten. What used to be in shops is that you would have to use copper, which has gotten very, very expensive, or black pipe, which requires some skill with threading. One of the first things that Andy told me when I talked to him on the phone was how simple the system is to install. He was 100% right. Now that we got our Rapid Air Airline system in, we went ahead and put up all of our real craft reels, which are 75-foot retractable hose reels. This will keep the airlines off the floor. It'll keep everything sanitary and a lot more safe. The Waltons are coming for their 1972 Dodge Charger Rally. But before the big reveal, we're taking a look back at the journey the car's taken here at Graveyard Cars. We've recapped the history, the bodywork, the graphics, the engine, the suspension, the exhaust, emblems, dash, and top. Finally, it's time to get the motor running because at the end of the day, they are gonna wanna drive the car. Okay, so if you had your choice, I've always asked you, to driving a car, if you had that 72 Charger and you had a choice between a 318 and a 440, which was optional in the rally car, which one would, to drive and performance, which one would you take? To drive a 318 performance, big block. 
I'd say the same thing. Okay. What about to work on under the hood? Well, 318. The truth. I think I think a, a small block is easier to work on, except for one thing people forget: the distributors in, in the back. back instead of the front. Mm -hmm. That one makes a big block That's nice. That's the only distributor thing. In the front you know, instead of the back. The, I'll tell you what makes a difference is when you have to replace it. Right. If it does take a uh, Darren on you, <laughs> then, nope. Then uh, pull the distributor out, mark where the rotor's pointing, put the new one in, put it back down, mark the timing on it, or reset the timing either way, you're done. And With a 318, you got your gut hanging over, well, I got my gut hanging over the car, the front of the car, reach into the back. You could Weight free. Watchers commercial you on there, they'd be going gut hanging yeah. over that fender. And then you know? come back after I've lost weight, yeah, and I'm, show just, the difference. I'm like hovering yeah. over oh, it or yeah, something. Like You're an a angel. damned idiot. <laughs> <laughs> it'd be a good commercial, though. <laughs> Let's first see if it cranks over, Derek. If you want, you can hit the keys, see if the neutral safety system's working. Everything's plugged in, so I hope so. Be nice. Brakes work. And of course, in retrospect again, the fact that it didn't want to start right up, because of the distributor and because of the spark plug orientation, we had the firing order off. Uh, that and Royal screwing up, not hooking up the fuel line on it, and just a multitude of problems, a dead battery. It's just, it's just better to start it on the run stand, sit there and listen to it, and then you know in the back of your mind you're out of the woods on that part of it. And that's what I said the first time I used it, and I felt apart from what I should have done, I went backwards on what I should have done, and uh, I learned from it, so you're still an idiot. It's like ordering a burger instead of a salad. <laughs> backwards. Hit it. Make sure all our fuel lines. Yeah, there's a little bit of a leak. Too. Oh, we don't have a fuel line hooked up down there. Well, I thought you hooked it up. No, Again? Wait a second. This is the third it. time. I have no idea what goes Brain on dead. in Royal's head. Well, this is like strike three for him. I think it's the, it's the, complexion of malted barley hops and bong resin in his head floating around with no hair on there to protect it from the sun. And it's just percolating in there and it's just fried his brain. Don't let him hook up the fuel lines. He doesn't. He's not any, yeah, touche. <laughs> no, I bolted the thing and then went on to something else. Sorry. <laughs> Actually, I got pulled off. Third time. Every time we go to start one of these, he forgets to hook up the fuel lines. All that means is the car's gotta go back up in the air, connect the fuel lines, and figure out why it won't start. This is classic Royal. Tell the difference there. It's sounding a little different. Okay, go ahead. Oh, I gotta run. I've said it before, I'll say it again. When you're having problems on a car, the best thing to do is walk away. Like when Larry showed up with the interior, it was a perfect segue for us to get the hell out of all the problems we were having with the car not running and start putting the interior together. And it was beautiful. He did a great job putting the legendary covers on. They fit the seats really well. They were a nice tight bolster, which sometimes isn't the case. We put all of the interior in it, the, the back seat, the back door trim panels, armrest, rear package tray, uh, door armrests, door panels in the front got put on, seat belts were put in. I know we got a lot of the trim done on the outside of it. If I remember right, the front windshield, the back windshield, the lower reveal moldings. Uh, a lot of trim and ornamentation along with the interior got put together on that car. and. By the time we were done, our heads were cleared again. It was time to go back to the problem. I'm like a little trim. Remember, to clear your walk head. away. Walk away. Okay. What do you do next, Mark? The bolts are cleared and cleaned up. I don't know. Let me get this distributor in. So we went through a basic diagnostic test. It's an electronic ignition, which I don't use all that often. And I ended up diagnosing it to be a bad new distributor. I bought a brand new distributor and it's bad. <laughs> Did you ever run the wires? Check them. Try it. Hang on, we got wires on wrong. Okay. Here's the deal on this firing order, you freak. I'm used, I've been working on, what, when was the last time we did a 340? When was the last time we did a small uh, you, block? You did it in a uh, Yeah, I haven't put the down. distributor in. I haven't Fantastic put the distributor in. I've been down. working on nothing but B and RB engines. And a 340 and counterclockwise lot, rotation. And I got off base. I put the 1843-6572, but I put it in a clockwise ro in a counterclockwise rotation, and the small block calls for a, a clockwise rotation. That's reverse. all it was. It's just reverse. It's no big deal. It's because the distributor's on the it other side of the It is a big deal because the car wouldn't start. Boy, that's a real thing. Right over there, check that one. Right there, check that one.
Runs good. Runs really good. That's good. In 1970, Chrysler introduced a yellow, FY1. On Dodge products, it was called Top Banana Yellow. What was it called on the Plymouth lineup? Was it Lemon Twist, Lemon Drop, or Lemon Peeler? The answer coming up after the break. So what did Plymouth call their FY1 paint code starting in 1970? The answer is Lemon Twist Yellow. A lemon peeler is a common name, but it's also associated with a particular bicycle that I had as a child and many other people did. They also had an orange crate and a pea picker. Lemon drop, of course, is the famous candy, which are delicious and tasty. But the answer for the Plymouth lineup of the FY1, lemon twist yellow. Visit graveyardcars.com to learn more. We've recapped the restoration of the Walton 72 Charger Rally. After the interior got installed and the engine fired up, all that's left before the big reveal is the ornamentation. If Darren doesn't lose anything. You know, once, once we had so much done on the car, like the interior in it and the engine running and all the stuff buttoned up, all we had left is a little bit of trim. But it's that little bit of trim and ornamentation on these cars that when it's when you're at the end of a week-long suicide shift of 24 hours straight and you're just exhausted, that's when you can make mistakes. But putting the wheel opening moldings, putting the bumpers on looked beautiful. Darren, go get your bolts. I got them there back here, buddy. Back where? Back, back there. That's why I said to go get them. Oh well, I couldn't get past you, Mark. I'm not a I'm not a bird. <laughs> okay, hang on a second. Okay, we're gonna go up and in. You want to tape the fenders a little bit or nothing? No, nope, we're just going to go in careful here and guide it. Hang on, bud. You can get a bolt started right over here, Chief. OK. Oh, I put the sock in the back. It moves off. What, Darren, while I'm down here? Stop, Mark. Back I it off. Back it off. I told you I was, you Go ahead, buddy. <laughs> You shut up, you f***ing gorilla. Go back to your cage. You, you are. <laughs> I don't make shit, OK? I oh, burn it. Oh, Mark. Come on. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> These two brackets here. That's the upper ones. Yeah. Just need to be cleared. And yes, yeah. Uh, probably, yes. Yeah. Well, they were down here. <laughs> They're these right here. Where are they at? They hang in somewhere, maybe? What do you need? We, we're looking for a pair of these that should be painted right now. You know, Mark, a lot of times you say, I'm the culprit when things get lost. Why do you always blame me? I'm not the one that loses this stuff most of the time. With all due respect, I have seen you walk up to my toolbox, get a screwdriver, mm -hmm. walk out into the yard, walk back in in a couple of minutes saying, hey, I need a screwdriver. And I'll say, well, what happened to the one that was in your hand? I don't know. I can't find it. That's two minutes. Elapsed time. Sorry. That bracket right there. We well, had I them off. We painted them. These aren't them, but I'm sure they're going to need these sometime. These aren't them, but you guys are probably going to be looking for these soon, right? Plus the upper ones. OK. Josh, have you seen a pair of brackets, black gloss black brackets? Were those the ones that Darren was mocking me about that are back behind the car, this, this CUDA here on the ground on the cardboard? If they are something that Darren was mocking you about, and I just asked him and he hasn't seen them, I'm going to kill him. I don't know him. where they are, bud. Darren! Jesus. What? What in the living Sam hell? is wrong with you. What did I do? You were teasing Josh about the very brackets I was just asking you no, about. No, I tease you about something else, about no, the No, Darren, no. You seem to be getting worse about me pointing something out to you and you saying you've never seen it, but yet it's in your hand or it's in front of you. Is there is there something that's happening on a more frequent basis with you where you're doing that? Only my doctor would know for sure. Well, no, I'm being serious. I don't know if it's part of a game that you're playing no because game. you, <laughs> it's the most, amazing stuff you come up with that you convince people to feel sorry for you. I don't know if you're trying to set the stage now for maybe like Alzheimer's, pull the Alzheimer's card on us, oh. which would allow you to be able to take stuff, not put it back. Wait, that's my thing. Um, Did you know that there's only one letter in the alphabet that's not in the periodic table of elements? Tough. <laughs> that wasn't what I was after, though, the brackets. 
Did you know they were there? No, I didn't know they were there. I didn't put them there. I never saw them. What were you talking about down here? It was something else he put down there I had to get. Were they next to the brackets? No, they were over, it was over here. Way all the way over there, the three inches over to the right, and you didn't see the brackets? Son of a bitch. Chair versus seat versus Darren. He needs to go to a, a <laughs> you see one flew over the cuckoo's nest, didn't you? Where Nicholson goes up, to, that was shot in the Oregon State uh, Mental Institution. And that wasn't my dealings with those brackets. They're one of Josh's little ploys to get out of getting in trouble or whatever he did. Great grandpa Ewok. Now, was he originally an Oregonian? I don't know. I'm not Your original grandpa. From here. You know, sometimes you'd be really disappointed. The further back that you dig, the more shit you dig up. Not my family. I come yeah, from royalty. Bullshit. Warman is royalty. I looked it up. We come from like, we're like four descendants from the King of England. Okay, I'm at the head of the scrotum pole. You guys are all the way down <laughs> the here. Scrotum You're my pole. little testes. What? <laughs> I'm royalty. Four generations back. You know, really, the car went together well because it came apart well. You look back at all my photos in the inventory that we took of the car, it was so complete. Putting the front bumper on was a piece of cake. Putting the grill in it, the grill worked, the headlight doors, even the ornamentation that went in that, the lower valance, the front park lamps, all of it came out of the car so it should go back in it. And it was good. We had Bumper stuff. Depot did a beautiful mm -hmm. job on the bumpers, absolutely beautiful job. With all the fighting and all the bickering and all the crap that we do, it's two things are amazing to me. One, I don't kill both of you, and Royal, who's never <laughs> here. And Two is we seem to pull together and get the car done. And when the cars are done, they're done right, and they look great, and we have happy customers. But like a rectal exam. Yeah, no, being with you is like a rectal exam. <laughs> it's the equivalent of a rectal exam. I would rather have a rectal exam. I would rather have them shove the Hubble telescope up my <laughs> than spend an hour in a car with you. Okay. <laughs> We've been planning this for years. It was my mom's car, and I brought a picture of my mom. Right off the bat with Mitzi, she's balling. It was, it's, it's beautiful. After the body, paint, decals, drivetrain, dash, top, and a couple of hiccups with the engine, the Walton 72 Charger Rally gets the Graveyard Car stamp of approval. And hopefully, the Walton stamp of approval. Good to see you. Yeah. Hello, Studley. Yeah. Good to see you. <laughs> yeah, Mark should be back anytime now. He actually took it on a test drive. I'm really excited to see it. We've been waiting a long time. and It was sad to drive by in my yard every day and see it sitting there and deteriorating. And it would just kill me every day. So to see it all put together and back to normal and drivable and can't wait to take it to some shows. And, and my dad's 84th birthday is on the 22nd in a couple days. So that's out very special too. And it was my mom's car and I brought a picture of my mom. We've been waiting quite a little while and we've been planning this for years. I think he's gonna cry. I think we all are. It's meant a lot to him over the years. My mom and dad and him spent a lot of time just traveling and going places in it. And yeah, I think he's gonna be pretty excited and he's been very excited. <laughs> I'll tell you about cutting it to the wire. There's, there's nothing more scary, more nerve-wracking, but a bigger reward than out doing the driving of the car for the very first time, then pulling in and seeing the whole family, a whole tribe of Waltons, Waltons Mountain right there in our front parking lot. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, look at that. Oh, I don't think Hunter's ever seen this. You're kidding, Hunter? Oh, oh. oh my god, it's beautiful. Ta-da! Oh. Oh. That better than Oh my new. God. So beautiful. Hi, everybody. <laughs> I pull up. I know it's kind of an emotional moment, so I'm thinking I don't want to lock eyes. I do. Right off the bat with Mitzi. She's balling. Jim's all teared up. How do you like your tires? That, that's great. <laughs> it looks yeah. good, doesn't it? Yeah. Like back, back in the day when I remember. What do you think, beautiful? It's absolutely like it? beautiful. Good. You know, it hasn't been this bright for a long time. Being able to see their reaction when the car first pulled up, you know, I didn't realize what I was in for. What's it's and then, all about. You know, bam, all of a sudden, they're all crying. What man can't say that it, it would bring a tear to their eye to see somebody that happy? That guy had desert for eyes. <laughs> Everybody around here was looking for a Kleenex, and it, it looked like he needed Visine. 
The, the Waltons are good people. It's one of my favorite families that we've worked on any of the cars for. Very emotional family, very close family. It was, it was nice. Great. It was, it's, it's beautiful. And so when you look out there and you see Jim and Mitzi and the kids and the grandkids all in that car and hovering around it and water in the eyes, knowing that their dream has come back around and it's true and that they're gonna enjoy this car for another 40 years, as a person, it makes you feel good. It's a very rewarding feeling. Radiator's been reconditioned, brand new AC condenser. All the pipes for the AC are completely restored or reconditioned. The hoses are all replica original. And look at that thing her. Yeah. Step on the gas a little bit. How do you like those tips? Oh my god, those are great. See the holes in them? Yeah. Red? Oh, oh great. great. <laughs> god, he got a left foot. He's crazy. Yeah, he's crazy. Wow, that looks new. I think it sounds good. It does sound good, yeah. <laughs> but it was cool. The car did perform well. The car ran good. It tracked good. I felt good about handing it over to Jim and Mitzi and, and the family. And so for, the, for me, the big payoff, of course, is we didn't have any functional problems with the car. And at the end of it all, uh, we had two really happy customers and a whole happy group of all just piled in there, car loads on Baba, let's get a ticket in this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still in second gear again. There we go. Much better than I thought it would be. It uh, drives good, uh, comfortable, upholstering and everything is in it. It's, it's nice. The whole bunch of us love it. And uh, like Mitchie said, it's, it's going to stay in the family. It's so much fun to ride in again, and it's been so many years. We haven't driven it from probably since 1990, 99, I think was the last time it was driven. So pretty exciting to ride around town in it and cruise around. The car just feels good. I'm happy to be able to drive it again. We're very glad that Graveyard Cars took it in and did this for us. And it did, it bring our family back together. And it's, you know, something that we're sharing out together that not very many families share something like this, and it's really important. And I have my grandson here too, one of my grandchildren that's sharing it with us, and it's very exciting that he's involved in this too, because someday he may get the car. I'll keep it until this fall, September, October, something, and then they'll take it to Montana. They'll keep it for a while and give it to the oldest son. He has it for a while until he gets tired of it and it goes to the youngest son, and then down dying it to the great grandson. Oh, for sure, always. It'll always be in the family. As long as it runs, it's in the family. Next time on Graveyard Cars. We're all hard at work on the 1970 Plymouth Superbird. Derek hooks up the headlights, Larry installs the headliner, and we bolt up the engine, transmission, and drivetrain. Bodymen finish up mud work, paint, and assembly on the 1970 Charger RT Collision Repair. Mark bolts on the manifolds and paints the 383 engine for Cook's 1970 Barracuda Convertible. And with Mark as my accomplice, I commit grand larceny on the next episode of Graveyard Cars. <laughs>